Why are people leaving the church? Hi, my name is Ted Rosenblatt, and I am here with my father, Dr. Rod Rosenblatt, and we are going to tackle something that's, uh, that's, that's a fairly uh, top of, this, this is a fairly hot topic today. This is going to cover, and we're going to do this in a number of parts. Why are people leaving the church? I thought I'd start with something else, but I'm not going to. I'm going to say, first of all, because they're not hearing the gospel. And we have to realize in in most of American Protestantism, the goal of the gospel was to bring you to faith in Christ, saving faith. But I would say to my Westmont students, I'm going to say something now that isn't going to make any sense, but stay with me. Why would I need to preach the gospel to people who have already been converted? And the Reformation answer is because we need it not to be converted, but we need it because we live by it. And I was right. The students shook their head like, what kind of a category is that? But it's a, in the Reformation, it's a very, very real one after conversion. And if a church isn't delivering that, I'm going to leave it and find one where that is, I can depend on the pastor preaching the gospel every single Sunday to me. Now, that's only one reason we'll cover others in different broadcasts. But that one, at least to a Lutheran, is gigantic. It's defining um, all other reasons to be in church. Uh, We'd say the sacraments to receive God's good gifts. But other than those two, everything pales. Can I depend on this parish and that pastor to preach Christ to me in his saving office, his death, and his resurrection for me. The point of the point of church is really what you're I, is what I think about here when you talk about that. Why do we go to church? And that would be we could probably do our own set on this, but I think that in this case, I will just go ahead and insert it here for the case of this discussion. Why do we go to church? Right? Why? Why do we go? Is this something that we should be doing because we're we're supposed to? There's attendance taken. Yeah. <laughs> right? Um, because, you know, it looks good to our community. It looks good to our neighbor that I'm showing up and doing the thing. Dad, why? Why do we go to church? Well, the Reformation answer again is to receive God's good gifts. For the first time, that is to move me from unbelieving to believing in Christ. And if that's already been done, or I'm conscious of it was done to me when I was baptized, then to hear the pastor strengthen that with a given text for the morning that points to Christ in his dying and his rising for me. And if he does that, I'm satisfied. It's a very simple recipe. Now, others have different reasons for leaving, as we'll cover in future broadcasts. So let me, let me touch on the other side of this. Um, and is this part of the discussion that we'd had that led us to talk about this? Does not showing up to church necessarily mean that somebody has walked away from the faith? It really doesn't. It could be those people who are yearning for a pa- to have a pastor preach Christ to them and can't find one. Uh, the top question when we got together, White Horse Inn, some sort of gathering, was always, where can I find a church where I live where a pastor will do this for me? It was the number one question by a factor. And they imagined, I think, we had a Rolodex that we could refer them to a given parish in Edina, Minnesota. We didn't have a Rolodex or a database to do that. Um, but people were always asking, how do I find a church that does this? That matches my experience when I was younger and I took, I would now call my church break. I wasn't at any point feeling like I had thrown Christ out with the bathwater as it were, right? I had felt like my faith, uh, was better served not being there than being there for the moment. And I, I know that's a hard, that's a hard one, but, but the fact of the matter is, what have you told me? You've told me 
year for years growing up. You know, if what what kind of thing are you attending if Christ is not preached? Right. Where what are you there for? Right. On the negative side, there's there's nothing there to be there for. Right. The point of the thing, the point of the thing is like you were just saying, Dad, to receive Christ's gifts. If the point of the thing is that, and those are not there and you're not receiving them, then why be there? Yeah. That's a toughie. Yeah. But this is on, I, this is fixable. You know, this is something that we can get to and there's great hope to be found there. And when we rediscover the gospel and when parishioners discover the gospel, what happens? You, they, tell, you tell me. <clears throat> they will show up if you're going to do that for them. There's a certain kind of person that won't miss if they can depend on you to do that. If they're given Christ and his benefits, they'll be there. So we're going to wrap this up. And I uh, hope you enjoy this time. I hope this answers a few of your questions and probably creates a few more. Hope you stay with us and uh, communicate with us on, on social media and visit 1517.org for more good news. See you soon. Thank you for joining us on Talks with Dad Rod, part of the 1517 Podcast Network. This podcast and all 1517's content is made possible through financial support by listeners just like you. Please visit 1517.org for more, and please consider clicking on the donate button and making a recurring or one-time contribution to help us share this good news in a world which so desperately needs it.